Star Trek The Original Series, Season 2, Episode 6, The Doomsday Machine. Sorry for the long wait on this video. I've been dealing with some allergies that made my voice even more intolerable than usual. Also, I'm lazy, so there's that. And this one was suggested a while back by someone, but I forget who it was. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you suggested this episode for me to do in a video, let me know. Uh, but I was probably going to do it anyway at some point, just because it's a fun episode. Although I hope I'm not repeating myself too much, because one of my earliest videos was kind of about this episode. It was very short, and I basically just made fun of the guest stars acting and put some fart sounds over some of the scenes. It was crude, but I'm proud of it. But I figure it's time to go a little deeper with this episode because there's a lot of fun, wacky stuff in it. And it's definitely one of the best episodes of the entire series. It's always ranked near the top. I do have some minor issues with it, though. And we'll talk about that and more as we go. But I think we should just get right into it. The episode opens up with the Enterprise receiving a distress call from one of its sister ships, the USS Constellation. And they find it drifting in space inside of a solar system that's been almost completely destroyed. The star is still intact, so they know it couldn't have been a supernova. But seven planets have been inexplicably destroyed. The constellation has been attacked by something. It's heavily damaged. They go to red alert. And I don't know where Lieutenant Uhura is, but this woman is at her station. Maybe Uhura is on shore leave or something. Who knows? Scans show the constellation is in pretty bad shape, but life support is still functioning in some key areas. So Kirk, McCoy, Scotty, and some gold shirts beam over to investigate. There seems to be no one on board, no dead bodies or anything. Scotty says the warp drive is shot. They might be able to get impulse working, but that's about it. They head to auxiliary control to see if they can get a look at the captain's log. And they find this fucking shadrule just sitting there. His name is Commodore Matt Decker, and he's the captain of the Constellation. He's obviously alive, but he's pretty out of it. Kirk asks what happened, but... He's in a state of overacting, and he can't answer. They play back his log, and it says that the Constellation noticed the fourth planet breaking up. So they went in to investigate, and they were attacked by some kind of planet killer. Decker finally starts conversing with them, and he says he beamed his entire crew down to the surface of one of the planets. What happened to your crew? Oh, I, I had to beam them down. Oh, we, we were dead. No power or phasers, useless. I stayed behind. Last man, captain, last man aboard the ship. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? It's weird that he seems to not know what he's supposed to do. And of course, his entire crew was killed when this thing consumed the planet that they were on. He describes it, and he says it's miles long with a maw that could swallow a dozen starships. This thing is a highly advanced robotic weapon that feeds on planets. And of course, it's heading towards the most popular section of the galaxy. They say galaxy, but I think they must mean quadrant. Because Starfleet just hasn't explored that much of the galaxy at this point. And Decker describes his initial encounter with the planet killer... And he says this. Your log stated that the fourth planet was breaking up. You went in to investigate. We saw this thing hovering over the planet, slicing out chunks of it with a force beam. Okay, so why the fuck did he beam his entire crew down to a planet? If he knows this thing destroys planets, why would he do that? I have puzzled over this since I was a kid. Why did his crew even agree to go? It's insane. And are there no escape pods? No shuttles? If they were in escape pods, they would all have lived. Because this thing clearly isn't interested in smaller objects. Commodore Decker could be the dumbest starship captain ever. He's in the running. Absolutely in the running for dumbest starship captain. I mean, it's fucking wacky. 
And no one even questions his course of action. Obviously it was wrong because his crew ended up dead, but he should have known it was wrong from the start. <laughs> and Kirk speculates that it's some sort of doomsday machine, hence the title. He thinks someone created it and used it in a war centuries ago and ultimately led to the destruction of both sides. And Decker gets a little agitated. He starts ranting and raving. He then apologizes and says it's just that he never lost a command before, which is honestly hard to believe. So Decker and McCoy beam over to the Enterprise, while Kirk, Scotty, and the Gold Shirts stay behind to continue repairs. And it doesn't make much sense for Kirk to stay behind. In this situation, he's got to be on the bridge of the Enterprise, but he stays for some reason. They track to the Constellation and are on course for Federation space to warn them. But of course, they encounter the planet killer. And here it is. Star Trek's version of Galactus. It's basically a giant blunt in space. <laughs> I mean, where the fuck is Snoop Dogg when you need him? And it's attracted to energy. It consumes planets, and it's obviously interested in starships too, but I think it must be self-aware. It's got to be intelligent, because if it just wanted energy, it would probably just fly right into the sun, like a giant moth to a flame. But it doesn't. So it's gaining on them. Kirk tries to beam back, but they're attacked, and they have to raise shields. The tractor beam on the Constellation fails, and both starships separate. They have also lost communication with Kirk and the Constellation. And suddenly, the planet killer changes course, and it's heading towards another populated solar system. I don't know why it's broken off the attack on the Enterprise, but it has. And Decker wants them to attack it. Spock argues that they have to survive long enough to warn Starfleet Command about this thing. And Decker takes command of the Enterprise somehow. He argues that it, he was too far away when he attacked it on the Constellation. Now he plans to hit it with phasers at point-blank range. Spock says that won't work. The hull is too strong for a single starship. McCoy also protests, and Spock says that if McCoy can certify him medically unfit for command, Spock can relieve him. But he will need to show medical records to prove it. McCoy says he hasn't had time to run an examination on him. Okay, fine. But can he just use his eyes? This dude is clearly unhinged. How is this possible? Forget the medical analysis. This guy just lost a whole ship full of people. He should automatically be relieved of all duty until an investigation proves that he wasn't negligent, which wouldn't happen because he was negligent. It's ridiculous. You know, his choice to beam his entire crew down to the surface of a planet while on the run from a thing that he knows destroys planets is automatic negligence, court-martial, dishonorable discharge, and frankly, jail. <laughs> also, give him a breathalyzer test because I'm not entirely sure he's not 100% shithoused right now. I mean, this guy is not fit to be the captain of a fucking salad bar at a 90s pizza hut. <sighs> anyway, Decker orders the attack on the planet killer, and he keeps holding these little fucking Game Boy cartridges. Looks like he's got Pokemon Gold and Silver or some shit. And over on the Constellation, Kirk manages to get the view screen working. And it's interesting to see Kirk getting his hands dirty and fixing something on his own. Obviously, he's no Scotty in that department, but it's good when the show remembers that he's a captain, he would have at least some skill in a lot of different areas. And he sees the Enterprise attacking the planet killer, and naturally, it does no damage. So he hails the Enterprise to no avail, and Spock tells Decker that any further attacks on this thing would basically be nothing short of suicide, and that would make him unfit for command. And Spock will relieve him on that basis. So Decker relents for a moment, at least. They try to break off, but they're being pulled into the maw by some kind of tractor beam. It's basically the Death Star, 
pulling the Millennium Falcon into its docking bay. George Lucas had to be a Star Trek fan. And on the Constellation, Scotty has miraculously managed to get the engines working. And one of the phaser banks. <laughs> he really is a miracle worker. So they fire on the planet killer and they manage to break the tractor beam hold on the Enterprise. You'd think this would be the perfect opportunity for the Enterprise to escape. But no. Decker is a moron. He decides to fire on the thing once more. And then he says, we did it. Fire phasers. <laughs> Did what? The man is a fool. And they finally get communications working. Kirk hails the Enterprise and is shocked to find that Decker is in command. He's also understandably pissed off about it and doesn't really give a shit that Decker outranks him. He calls him a lunatic. And he's right. He also orders Spock to relieve Decker. And somehow that works. I guess Spock is willing to do it as long as Kirk takes the blame for it. I mean, in reality, Spock should have Vulcan neck-pinched this fuckhead a long time ago. And based on the terrified looks of everyone on the bridge under Decker's command, no one would have protested. So, Spock is back in command, and he orders a useless red shirt to escort Decker to sickbay for his medical evaluation, while the Enterprise heads towards the Constellation to try to beam back the away team. And of course, Decker starts a fight with the useless red shirt in the hallway. An empty hallway, by the way. There's 430 people on this ship, but no one is ever around when the shit hits the fan in the hallways. And naturally, this much younger security officer loses to this broken down, unhinged has-been. And Decker steals a shuttlecraft. He speaks to Spock and Kirk over the communicator, and he says he's going to fly the shuttle into the maw of the planet killer. Kirk pleads with him not to throw his life away. He flies in and dies. And my God, the acting. This is why I added those fart noises to my prehistoric video on this, because it really looks like he is just having explosive diarrhea right now. And maybe he is. I certainly would be. And they think he died for nothing. But Sulu says the planet killer's power dropped slightly after the shuttle broke up inside of it. And... Kirk thinks a starship might do a little bit more damage, so he wants to take the Constellation inside the Maw. So, Scotty rigs up a detonation device that will destroy the ship 30 seconds after it's triggered. He and the gold shirts beam back to the Enterprise while Kirk remains behind to flip the detonator. But of course, the transporter shorts out after Scotty beams back. He manages to fix it just in time to beam Kirk aboard after he triggers the 30 second countdown. Scotty is the real hero of this episode in a lot of ways. He couldn't possibly be more clutch. And then the constellation explodes inside the planet killer and it dies. Happy ending. And on the bridge, Kirk makes reference to the old H-bomb and how it was Earth's doomsday machine and how they just used something similar to that to destroy this doomsday machine. And Spock wonders about other devices like this in the galaxy. Kirk also says that his report will say that Decker died in the line of duty, which I think is stretching the truth beyond belief. And yeah, his death does help them figure out how to destroy this thing, but it was a total accident. The guy was just a useless nut job. And that's basically how the episode ends. It's a very cool episode, not perfect. I really don't like the Decker character, in case you can't tell. But I guess I do enjoy William Wyndham's hammy acting. I mean, people say Shatner is a hammy actor, and he certainly is at times, but it's nothing compared to William Wyndham in this episode. I mean, what he's doing is wild. He's not chewing the scenery, he's devouring it. He's the Joey Chestnut of hamminess. And Shatner is almost stoic in this episode. He's not hammy at all. And of course, Decker can kind of be compared to Captain Ahab. It's a very similar situation. And normally I'd be able to sympathize with him a little bit more, but because he took such a foolish course of action, beaming his crew down to the surface of a planet in order to keep them safe from a planet-killing entity, it's just really hard to sympathize. I mean, it's 
It's like strapping a T-bone steak to your face and locking you in a room with a hungry puma and then saying that you had no other choice. <laughs> it was the only way to save you. Just an all-around goofy captain. And of course, his son, Will Decker, appears in Star Trek The Motion Picture. They never actually say it's his son, but it makes sense that it would be. And it's funny that Matt Decker was killed by a giant space robot, and Will Decker ended up making out with one. I don't know if that's noteworthy, but I'm noting it anyway. And of course, it's fun to speculate about the kind of people who would have built this giant space blunt, you know. It's almost beyond comprehension. Kind of reminds me of the whale probe in Star Trek IV in that way. I've always liked the cosmic weird shit in Star Trek. Although it's kind of funny that this thing just died in space. You'd think Starfleet would be studying the shit out of it, but maybe not. Maybe that's just too much work. Who knows? Anyway, I'm out of steam. That's pretty much all I got for now. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And until next time, take it easy.